Good morrow to you and welcome to the Baron's News Desk, covering the latest happenings and goings on in the world of tabletop card gaming. With the setlist for Theros Beyond Death being nearly entirely spoiled at this point, there are several cards that have drawn my eye, in particular one legendary creature that could be used as your commander. Enter the card Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. For one, a green and a blue, it is a 6-6 legendary creature, Elder Giant. When Uro enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Whenever Uro enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain 3 life, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. It has escape of green green, blue blue, which states exile 5 other cards from your graveyard, and you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost. Now on its surface, this card doesn't seem that fantabulous. After all, it simply looks to be mostly a growth spiral on a creature. But the fact that it gives you a growth spiral type effect on a creature actually makes it even more abusable. And the fact that it will be readily available for you in the command zone whenever you want it makes it even more potent. If you are looking to play Uro in a more competitive manner, here is my recommendation. Include in your deck as many mana dorks, as we like to say, as possible, such as Birds of Paradise or Lanoir Elves, or in this slot you could also use any fast mana artifacts that you might have lying around, such as Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, but of course many of those can be rather expensive. The mana dorks will do just fine. You need to be able to play one of these on turn one, so that on turn two you will have three mana at least in order to cast Uro. On turn two you cast Uro in order to play a land from your hand and to draw a card. Now going into turn three, if you play another land for a turn, you should now have five mana, therefore you can cast Uro again. As long as you have another land in your hand, which you should, you are now going into turn 4 with 7 mana available at your fingertips. Now we can simply choose from any number of combos to create infinite mana. For example, Selvala and Freed from the Real. Savala taps for 2 mana, even simply spotting herself, you don't need to spot Uro, and you simply pay 1 to untap her, and you keep tapping and untapping until you have infinite mana. Also with 7 mana, you could use the Grand Architect and Pili Pala combo. Play the Grand Architect first, tapping himself to pay 2 generic for the casting cost of Pili Pala. Then you pay 1 blue to make him a blue creature, tap him to add 2 to your pool, use that 2 to untap him to add 1 mana of any color, and you are creating infinite mana in a loop. Now what do you do with that infinite mana? Why you simply cast Uro as many times as you like from the command zone, drawing a card and putting a land into your hand each time. You can essentially draw your entire deck should you desire. There are of course many ways you could finish out the game, but an easy low hanging fruit would be Laboratory Maniac. Unfortunately, I do find this rather dull if your only intention is to try to go infinite on turn 4 every time, I find that rather monotonous. Therefore, let's find some more interesting ways that we could possibly use Uro. The first thing to remember is that his abilities say that when he enters the battlefield are triggered abilities and therefore go on the stack. This means that we have the opportunity to respond to those triggers while they are on the stack and possibly do things before they go off. For example, we could choose to sacrifice Uro instead to gain some extra value. Sacrificing him to greater good would allow for us to draw 6 cards and discard 3 cards. Sacrificing Uro at instant speed to momentous fall would allow for us to draw 6 cards then gain 6 life. Or Evolutionary Leap would allow for us to sacrifice him to get another creature from out of our library. We could sacrifice him to Ashnod's Altar or Phyrexian Altar, hopefully giving us enough mana to play him a second time during the turn. Here are some more artifacts that will allow for us to get additional value. Panharmonicon will cause Uro's triggers to happen twice each time he enters the battlefield. 
Cauldron of Souls can tap at instant speed to give a creature persist, meaning that they will come back from the graveyard with a minus one, minus one counter. But my personal favorite is once again, oh, I love talking about this artifact, Lifeline. Essentially, when Uro goes to the graveyard, as long as there was another creature in play at that time, he will come back from the graveyard at the end of the turn. Now, mind you, that's every turn, not just yours. Therefore, you could get to use his ability once during each of your opponent's turn, as long as you can continue to benefit from Lifeline. Perhaps we would like to go the other direction, not sacrificing him at all, but rather returning him to our hands at instant speed. Permanents such as Crystal Shard and Equilibrium give us potential repeatable use for casting Uro and returning him to our hand. And if we're doing a lot of bouncing to our hand, we will likely want to play with Alurin, which will allow you, uh, well, all players really, to play creatures with converted mana cost of three or less at instant speed and play them for free. Now, what say you? We turn all of this card draw that we're doing with Uro directly into a weapon. Words of Wind for two and a blue is an enchantment. You pay one, and the next time you withdraw a card this turn, each player returns a permanent he or she controls to its owner's hand instead. This, of course, means you're going to return Uro to your hand, but each of your opponents will have to bounce a permanent. And if we're using Alurin to play him essentially for free, we can do this many times over within a single turn. We can even leverage Uro as instant speed creature removal. Cards such as Ancient Animus, Pounce, and Titanic Brawl will allow for Uro to fight one of our opponent's creatures at instant speed. And as a 6-6, he should be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of your opponent's creatures. Now, perhaps you want even more card draw on the deck. Well, I'm happy to report that cards such as Elemental Bond and Kiora Behemoth Beckoner will allow for you to draw an additional card each time that Uro comes into play. I would not go so far as to call Uro broken. He can definitely be abused, but he's not as broken as, say, one of the other legendary creatures I reviewed before, Elsha of the Infinite. But did the Simic Colors really need another good commander at their disposal? What are your thoughts on Uro, commoners? What are some cards that you believe would synergize particularly well with this legendary creature? Be sure to like and subscribe and view many of my entertaining and informative videos here on Arista Cards. Until next time, cheers.